Good evening, everybody. I pray that everyone's having a good night. I'm going to get on here and I'm going to like and share this. So I pray that everyone's having a good evening. Hello, Dora. Hello, Whitney. How are y'all doing? Um, well, it is 7.01, and uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to, to read and to study your holy word, Lord. We thank you for the, the blessings that you've given us, Lord. We pray that, uh, that we are repentant for the things that we do wrong, Lord. Lord, take our sin away from us, Lord. Wash us clean in the blood of Christ. Allow us to stand before you today, blameless, Lord, ready to receive your word, ready to, to take your word and to apply it to our lives. May we learn from the mistakes that we have made, Lord. May we also learn from the, the things that we, we read, the mistakes and the the, the things that have happened in the past, Lord, let us not uh, continue the pattern of disobedience, the, the pattern of idolatry, the pattern of, uh, of, uh, of just disgracing you, Lord. Let us, let us lift you up. Let us hold you as holy, Lord. Let us put you in the rightful place, Lord, and let us put ourselves where we belong as well, Lord. Let us be set apart from the world and allow us to continue to grow in your word, to grow in your way, and to grow in your grace. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Well, guys, we are in Numbers 15. Um, last week, uh, we saw that uh, the people rebelled against uh, against Moses and really against God. Um, again, saying that they would have been better off to have stayed in Egypt. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were trying to find a leader to take them back. Um, God then said, uh, you know... Your unfaithfulness uh, has has led you to uh, to deny the land that I was offering you. I was giving you no one in this generation except for Joshua and uh, Caleb shall see it, and um, they will that the Israelites would wander in the wilderness for forty years. Um, you know it, it is, uh, and then then to top it off, the people of Israel decide, well, you know. Maybe God's right. Maybe we'll just go in and fight the battle. Well, it, it was already too late. The, the Lord had already uh, laid out uh, what was just, and uh, and they were defeated. So um, they de departed out, and uh, in this chapter, um, we are going to see the reiteration of some statutes. But we're going to see a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, additions to, uh, to to what the Lord had said. Um, these are not changes. These are not things that are any different. It's just clarification on um, some of the instruction that he's given. Uh, we will see the, the things that we had talked about. Uh, as a matter of fact, we talked about it on Sunday a little bit. The, uh, the specific instructions to a specific people to be carried out a specific way. Um, why is this being reiterated? Why is this um, put where it is? Well, we have to understand that the Bible is not in chronological order. Um, the Bible is in a theological order. So what we have seen um, in the previous chapters is we saw the Lord tell Moses to send the spies out. And uh, they came back uh, and they gave a, a poor report, which uh, frightened the people, and it caused the people to rebel, to say that they didn't want to go into the land that God was giving them. And um, pretty much saying, you know, he was good enough to get us out of Egypt, he was good enough to, to get us here, but uh, there's no way that we can take the, this land. They were just 
they were truly faithless. And uh, so in 15, chapter 15, starting with verse 1, and I'm going to read all the way to verse 16, and then I want to talk about it a little bit, and then we'll continue on from there. Um, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that you are to inhibit, which I am giving you, you will offer to the Lord from the herd or from the flock a food offering or a burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering at your appointed feast. Make a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Then he who brings his offering shall offer to the Lord a grain offering of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a quarter hen of oil. You shall offer with the burnt offering or for the sacrifice a quarter of a hen of wine for the drink offering for each lamb. Or for a ram you shall offer for a grain offering two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a third of a hen of oil. And for the drink offering you shall offer a third of a hen of wine a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And when you offer a bull as a burnt offering or a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or for a peace offering to the Lord, then the one shall offer with the bull a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a half hen of oil, and you shall offer for the drink offering a half a hen of wine as a food offering, as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Thus it shall be done for each bull or ram or lamb or young goat. As many as you offer, so shall you do with each one. As many as there are, every native Israelite shall do these things in this way, an offering a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And if a stranger who is sojourning with you or anyone is living permanently among you and he wishes to offer a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord, he shall do as you do. For the assembly there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike. Therefore the Lord, before the Lord, one law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. So the first thing that we see is we see, again, the specific instruction for a specific people to be carried out a specific way. Um, we, we've gone over the, uh, the laws of the, uh, the sacrifices. We saw that in Leviticus. We also saw it, uh, some in Exodus. Um, again, this is a reiteration. This is a, a bringing home of how God wants the offerings to be offered to him. Why is it put right here in this place? Well, the Israelites had been disobedient. The Israelites had been unfaithful. So this is a reminder of the proper way to worship and to bring sacrifice for an offering, whether it be a free will offering or a vow or a sin offering or a burnt offering. Um, these things are to be done in a certain way, and God wanted his people to be set apart and to be different and to do it the specific way that he said so that they would be honoring him. Now, if they were to go out and do a sacrifice uh, and just imitate the people that were around them, um, that would be insulting to the Lord because that is what is given to other gods. These, these offerings were to be done in a specific way so that they would bring honor and that they would be pleasing to the Lord. And they were to be true sacrifices because it says it to be brought from the herd or from the flock. So these are not animals that, that were just disposable. These were animals that were important to their society. So uh, as we see that, um, it brings us to the, to the point that I want to uh, point out here, and it's starting with verse 13. Starting with verse 13, it says, Every native Israelite shall do these things in this way, in offering a food offering with a, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And if a stranger is sojourning with you or anyone is living permanently among you, and he wishes to offer a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord, he shall do as you do. For the assembly, there shall be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you, a statute forever throughout your generations. You and the sojourner shall be alike before the Lord. 
One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. Now, this is important because... Uh, hold on just a moment. I think we're experiencing technical difficulties. It's not working. This is a Facebook issue, not a not a me issue. Oh, I but you're on. I'm live right now. Yeah. You're oh, live. wow. Okay. Facebook said they were having technical issues. I apologize. Wherever uh, I have no idea where they started having the technical issue though. This you're still being Facebook filmed. Said they were having technical issues. I apologize. You want my phone? Anyway, what I was uh, what I was talking about, what I was saying is, um, so uh, the rules for the sojourner, for the stranger, and for the Israelites is the same. And what we we need to look here is we need to one see that uh, that the Lord is offering His grace and uh, His His mercies and His uh, His love to people that are sojourning and strain, that are living with the Israelites if they are willing to worship the way that they are supposed to, the, war, the way that the Lord wants them to. So as we see that, uh, we can take away and we can look at uh, several things. One, the covenant that we have to, with Jesus Christ is also available to all people as long as they worship the way that they are supposed to worship. God takes worship seriously. God takes the, the way that we honor him seriously. Um, God takes the, 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 the way that we do communion, the way that we do uh, celebrate uh, his, his glory, the way that we glorify him, the way that we, 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 we share his message. He takes all of that seriously. And if it's done properly, those people are grafted in. But if they do not want to uh, obey or to follow his scripture or to follow his way, then they are not considered to be his people. And that's the thing about cults. That's the thing about, uh, about soft, uh, soft, soft religion or even uh, legalistic uh, 
uh, religion. They're adding to or subtracting from God's word. They're twisting God's word. They're making it the way that, 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 that they want it to be. That's not how it is. We can see from this right here, considering that God is immutable. God does not change. So God would not change the way that he wanted things from then to now. So what he is saying, he is saying, when you worship, you worship properly. Now, does it look the same? No, we don't do the sacrifices. Jesus Christ was the sacrifice. Jesus Christ is our sacrifice. Jesus Christ is our salvation. Jesus Christ is our, our, our purity. Jesus Christ is, uh, Jesus Christ is, our, our holiness. Jesus Christ is what sets us apart. So if we are not honoring Jesus or we are not uh, doing as we are supposed to do uh, with as far as our, our worship of Christ, then we are not united with God. We need to be mindful of the way we worship, the way that we, we act, the way that we share his message, the way that we do the things that we do. So going into verse 17, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I bring you, again, he's reiterating, when I bring you to this land again, and when you eat of the bread of the land, you shall present a contribution to the Lord. Of the first of your dough, you shall make a, a present a loaf as a contribution, like a contribution from the threshing floor, you shall present it. Some of the first dough you shall give the Lord as a contribution throughout your generations. So the first fruits, that comes back to what we talk about all the time with tithe and offering. God does not want your leftovers. God does not want your uh, secondhand items. Um, it's funny, whenever we do a, a, a clothing drive, uh, or, or something of that nature, we always end up with a, a, a couple of people that bring just stuff that they don't want, stuff that they, they should have thrown away. Um, but it's an opportunity to unload it and to make themselves feel better. But that's not what God wants. God wants the true sacrifice. God wants it off the top. And, and it's a matter of faith because through faith, uh, we know that God will restore the things that we bring to him and that we honor him with. So it's important that we understand that, again, the first fruits is what God wants. As we get into uh, verse 22, it says, but if you sin unintentionally, now this is something that is, uh, that is something that we do uh, quite often, and do not observe all of these commandments that the Lord has spoken to Moses, all that the Lord has commanded you by Moses from the day that the Lord gave commandment and onward throughout your generation. So from this day forward, now you cannot say, I did not know. Now you cannot say, nobody told me. That's the big one right there. That if it was done unintentionally without the knowledge of the congregation, all the congregation shall offer one bull from the herd for a burnt offering a pleasing aroma to the Lord with its grain offering and its drink offering according to the rule and make uh, and one male goat for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement. Again, we see that the priest is the one that has to, they have to go through the priest. For all the congregation of the people of Israel, they shall be forgiven because if it was a mistake and they have brought their offering, a food offering to the Lord, and their sin offering before the Lord for their mistake. And all the congregation of the people of Israel shall be forgiven. So again, God is immutable. We see that with this sacrifice, with the sacrifice that he just talked about, verse 26, I'll finish it out, and all the congregation of the people of Israel shall be forgiven. And the strangers that joins among them because the whole population was involved in the mistake. We see that God is immutable again through the forgiveness that he gives his people. God is forgiving. God loves his people. God wants to forgive his people. So therefore, he is willing to, to, to give the forgiveness, but this offering has to be made. And why this offering? 
This offering is the show of repentance. We talked about this on Sunday as well. We cannot be repentant for a sin that we do not think is a sin. So in order to be forgiven, we have to acknowledge that sin. That is why we pray and we verbally pray to God about the sins that we have committed, whether it be a small sin, big sin, even though we, you know, small sin, big sin to God, it's all sin. It's all the same to him, but to us, we have small sin, big sin. But no matter what the sin is, we have to acknowledge that sin and we have to be repentant. So we see that even though the methods that they use, the method of sacrifice, the method of food offering, the method of grain offering, even though the method is different, the, the, the meaning and the intent is the same. God will forgive those who have a repentant heart. He wants Israel to be repentant for their sin. Verse 27 reads, if one person sins un unintentionally, he shall offer a female goat a year old for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement before the Lord for the person who makes a mistake. When he sins unintentionally to make atonement for him, he shall be forgiven. You shall have one law for him who does anything unintentionally, for him who is a native among the people of Israel, and for the stranger who sojourns with him. But the person who does anything with a high hand, whether he is a native or a sojourner, reviles the Lord. And that person shall be cut off from among the people, because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That person shall be utterly cut off. His inequity shall be on him. So, does this mean that, that, that God doesn't forgive all sin? No, God does forgive all sin. However, the high-handed sin is a sin that is, is, is committed intentionally, and it is not repented for. It is, it, is the, it is for the person that does not ask for forgiveness. It is for the person who does these things intentionally. So... Um, we definitely don't want to be the high-handed person. You know, there are times that we do sin intentionally. Most of the time, though, it is unintentional. Most of the time, what we do is we catch ourselves in reaction as opposed to thinking things through, seeking the Lord, praying. We, we get into reaction mode, and, and that's when most of our sin takes place. But through obedience, what we can do is we can learn to be more prayerful um, and to to start to take those sins out of our lives. So um, anyway, that is where we are uh, right now as far as that goes. Um, so do we have any questions, comments, or concerns on any of that? All right. So... Let's go over what we've, what we've seen so far. We see that uh, the Lord, when uh, the people were disobedient, reiterates the way to properly worship. Um, he says that the people that may worship are the Israelites and the people who sojourn among them um, and the people who live with them. Um, and there is one statute for all. So he does not show favoritism. He does not show uh, any type of, he doesn't allow a shortcut for the Israelite and he doesn't uh, make it harder on the, the person who is dwelling among them. He is forgiving. Um, he is forgiving to those who have repentant hearts. Um, and he is willing to uh, accept all who accept him and are willing to honor him properly. So we see that, that again, that God is not different in the Old Testament as compared to the New Testament. Actually, the same. Um, so, uh, and we can see these same, these same, uh, same precepts in Ephesians, Colossians, uh, Romans 6. Uh, Paul gives insight on all of this. So, um, you know, as you read those books, You'll see Paul refer to these things, and and you'll you'll understand that uh, that it is is not different 
Uh, it's just executed in a different way. In uh, verse 32, it says, When the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. So he was, he was violating the Sabbath on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him in custody because it had not been made clear what should be done to him. And the Lord said to Moses, the man shall be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. And all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death with stones as the Lord commanded Moses. So I'm going to ask the question because I don't know if I will receive questions on this. Why is this penalty so severe? I mean, we, we see people who, uh, who know Christ. Uh, we see people who are good people all the time, skipping church, ignoring the Sabbath. Um, why is this such a big deal? And why did it carry such a heavy penalty? Um, while y'all are thinking about that and answering that question, I'm going to move on to verse 37. And the Lord said to Moses, again, the Lord said to Moses, this is the Lord's word. Speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a cord of blue on the tassel of each corner. And it shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them, not to follow after your own heart. In your own eyes, which you are inclined to horror after. You shall remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. So he is reiterating exactly who he is. I am the Lord your God. So, he even has the people of Israel wearing a garment, wearing tassels on their garments, so that they do not forget these statutes. Um, unfortunately, um, the people of Israel um, do not pay very much attention to the garments. Um, they still follow after their own heart, their own eyes, um, and uh, horror after the things of the world. But so do we. Um, so uh, whether you're wearing a priestly garment or you are wearing a t-shirt and shorts, uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is not the garment that you wear today. It is the way that you honor the Lord. So remember um, to honor the Lord with all that we do. So I see that Craig, um, Craig and tree have both answered um, the question about the Sabbath. So why was the penalty so severe? Because it's the Sabbath of the Lord's day. Absolutely correct. He was being rebellious of God's command. Absolutely correct. It was a commandment God gave Moses to honor. Absolutely correct. So let's put all of that together. It was the Sabbath to honor the Lord. So the Lord is saying, honor me on this day. Okay? Honor me. Relax. Spend time with your family. Do the things that you enjoy to do. Relax. Take a day off from work. Spend some time with me. Worship me the way that you should. It was, this man was being rebellious. He was, he was, he was doing work on the Sabbath, which was, which was against God's commandment. And it was a commandment that he had given Moses to, to, to honor. All of this is correct, and the reason that the penalty was so severe is because God did not want Israel to be like the other nations. There is such an important lesson for us to learn. Look, we are under a different civil law, you know, and God has told us to obey the civil law. So God would never instruct us to break the civil law that we are under at this time and to, to stone somebody or to, to, to take someone's life for, for, for not paying attention to the Sabbath or for breaking any other commandment. 
However, God knows all. And God knew that if this man was able just to do whatever he wanted, that the rest, not maybe not all, but some of the congregation would start following that example and start falling away. He even says in verse 39, not to follow after your own heart, your own eyes, which you are inclined to whore after. So this guy was following his own heart and his own eyes, and he could care less about what the Lord had said. And the Lord knew that it was going to infect the people that were set apart as holy. God wanted his people set apart. And the lesson that we can take from our lives, we need to surround ourselves with the right kind of people. We need to surround ourselves with people who honor God. We are people. We are flawed. We incline after our own eyes. We incline after our own hearts. And if we surround ourselves with people whose hearts and eyes differ from those who are, who are uh, within the kingdom of God, we will whore after those things as well. God knew this. God took care of the problem before it became a problem. So when we see people in our lives who are doing those things, who are doing not what the Lord would have them do, but what the world would have them do, how do we treat that? Well, we need to cut them off from our lives. It doesn't mean that we don't care about them. It doesn't mean that we don't love them. It doesn't mean that, that we hate them because we don't carry malice in our hearts. What it means is that we do not follow after them. There's a saying, people, places, things. If you want to change your behavior, you change the people you hang out with, you change the places that you go, and you change the things that you do. And if we're going to be set apart as holy, we need to follow that example. So great job, Shirley and Teresa. Now, or Shirley and Teresa, Craig and Teresa. But I will say this, Craig and Teresa, tomorrow, you two will be pitted against each other in a severe competition of Bible trivia. So, uh, good job and way to warm up. Um, that concludes this chapter. Again, though, let's go over these high points and let's look at what we can apply to our lives. One, we'll take it from, from chapter 14, we're disobedient people, okay? We are. We're disobedient people. I'm disobedient. I'm disobedient. So are you. And so is everyone else on this earth, okay? We are disobedient people. However, God has shown us what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to act in obedience and how we're supposed to ask for forgiveness, So, forgiveness comes from true repentance. So, we have to be of true repentance, of true heart, in order for us to honor God properly, whether the sin is intentional or unintentional. We need to remind ourselves daily of the things that God wants us to do. I mean, maybe, maybe you have a, 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 a thing on your, your phone or, or a post-it note on your car or whatever, and it says, it says, read scripture, pray, evangelize, glorify, honor, forgive, repent, be obedient. You know, put that somewhere, somewhere that you're going to see it, you know, because those are the things that we need to do. Are we going to be perfect? No. 
But you can tell who honors the Lord and who doesn't by the way that they, they, they act after they react. This man who had been collecting the sticks was obviously not repentant. And um, he needed to be removed from Israel. And that was the only way to do it. Therefore, we have other methods of doing it. We can delete them from our phone. We can, uh, we can not speak to them. We can uh, change the places that we go. We can, we can, there's lots of ways that we can eradicate the people that are disobedient from our lives. So we need to be mindful of what we are surrounding ourselves with. And I know, what I'm, I know exactly what some of you are going to say, but, but I'm trying to bring them to the Lord. You're not going to bring them to the Lord. The Lord's going to bring them to himself. Um, you know, you can evangelize, but that doesn't mean that you spend all day, every day with that person. Um, so uh, are there any questions, comments, concerns, uh, or complaints thus far? Uh if there are not, I will do announcements. Uh, Shirley, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe we have laundry ministry this Saturday at noon. Um, we have service on Sunday at 11 a.m. What a great service this past week. Uh, I don't know how the message was, but I know praise and worship was awesome. And uh, I love the fact that, uh, that two... Two young women gave their lives to Jesus Christ. That was amazing. Um, let's see. Uh, then on... Uh, okay, so I am correct on the on the laundry ministry. So we will be doing that at noon. Um, also, uh, I will be bringing the message this time at uh, the Master's Table on Sunday... Uh, we need to be there around 3.15. So, uh, Master's Table 3.15, we will be serving food. Um, other than that, uh, we will be back here next Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, let's close out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you afforded us to, to read and to study your holy word, Lord. Lord, we pray that we take these things to heart. We pray that we look at our lives and we see where our shortcomings are, that we acknowledge the sin, Lord, and that we bring that sin to you so that we may repent and we may be forgiven, Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, as, we, as we seek you and as we see you, Lord, that we are obedient, that we follow the rules that you have given us, Lord. And Lord, those that we, we, we surround ourselves with, Lord, we pray that they know you as well. We pray that, uh, that we can be vessels that you use to share the gospel Lord, and we pray that as you bring people into your fold, that we teach them properly, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, your patience and your love, the things that you have given us, and may we share those same qualities with the people that we interact with on a daily basis, Lord. May we always be a reflection of the one whom we love, which is you, and Lord, we just, we thank you for the opportunity to serve. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. All right, guys. Well, I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night. Can I get an amen? Just looking for one amen. One amen. Amen. Dora said amen.